Hi, this is Paul Milligan. Welcome to Innovate TV. I'm joined today by James Kennedy from PV, who is celebrating 30 years at PV. Congratulations, James. Thank you very much, Paul. It's a pleasure to be here. Good to see you. I mean, in, in that time, you must have seen kind of huge changes. Um, without going into kind of huge detail on all of them, what would you say maybe are the three biggest changes you've seen in that time at PV? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, as you said, it's been a lot. It's been a roller coaster. Um, but I think the single biggest thing, and this is a broad subject or a broad topic, is just the the digital revolution in general. Um, when I first joined PV in '92, digital technology was still in its infancy. I would say. You know, you were, we all had home computers like the Commodore, Big 20, 16. It was 8-bit CMOS technology, so to speak. Uh, but that started to, to grow legs and get momentum when the 16-bit technology came out. Um, when I first joined PV, I was dealing with spare parts orders, uh, and it was all handwritten. Not a lot of stuff was actually processed on the computer. Um, and I would say 80, 85% of PV's portfolio was actually still analog, you know, discrete analog devices from input to output. So mixers, delays, EQs, guitar amplifiers. Gee, we were even dealing with Valve still at that point, and still, of course, because of Valve Amp technology. Um, but we started to see in design some effects units coming through. And, one of the notable things that I've seen from a PV perspective and in general uh, around the market uh, and in, in our uh, realm of working um, was 16-bit technology just taken off. And we were getting these one RU units coming through the door, which were doing a whole host of things that you couldn't do with analog devices. And it was kind of a head scratcher of, well, how, how are they doing this? If one thing I will say is it still didn't sound great because the A to D technology wasn't fantastic. There. The sample rate was very low. The, the audio resolution was low. Um, so it was kind of, is this a false dawn almost? Um, this, this digital stuff. So we, I always had my analog hat on and had a lot of resistance to change uh, to digital. And, and the reason was I didn't understand it. Um, you know, dealing with ones and zeros instead of, you know, sinusoidal waves that you can taste and, and touch and, and understand. Um, but from, a, from a, a domestic and professional perspective, just seeing the the technology grow and the, you know, the chip technology, uh, the capability that we had with, you know, floppy disks. Um, we had a, one of the things we had was a, a special partnership with Motorola at the time. And they bought out the, the 6,800 series DSP chip. Uh, or they, actually, no, it was a 5,600, 56K. And they were looking for a partner to actually you know, get this technology into the market so that we partnered up, PV partnered up with Motorola and we started putting them in our synthesizers, our keyboards. Um, so we had this whole kind of um, very first level or very primitive level DSP uh, in the beginnings. Um, and then, of course, it's just rocketed from there, isn't it? You know, we've... We, computer technologies and how to slow down it's now we're now 64-bit processing we were at 32 um the resolution of audio is now 24 and 32 bit not 16 bit anymore so we've got you know perfect clarity in audio um you know almost the same integrity as the original analog uh, representation of the digital sound so yeah i think the digital the digital revolution was absolutely, and it coincided with my timeline for working with PV because sort of the early 90s, it started taking off. Um, and it kind of it went hand in hand with what we were doing. So 
our roadmap was absolutely in sync with the technology. So we were having these kind of uh, brainstorms of, well, what if we did this? And then all of a sudden, um, you know, whether it be Motorola or another company, they would complement what we're thinking with the hardware and the technology to actually achieve um, what we were, you know, yeah, it's, thinking it's, at the time. It's crazy to think in, in that 30 year period, just how much change the whole industry has kind of had to deal with. I just wondered if you could talk about maybe this, you know, we're now to three generations of the, the media matrix product. How has that managed to adapt to, like you said, widespread changes in, in a kind of that, that time period? How has that managed to adapt? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's adapted on, on, on a number of levels. Um, I mean, if the, the, fir- the inception of Media Matrix uh, was absolutely mind-blowing back in 1992 slash 93, um, and that was using the Windows platform as a software basis, um, you know, Windows 3.11, actually, which is just one up <laughs> from DOS. <laughs> so, yeah, we, you know, this is a really, really, you know, crude rudimental uh gui if you like um so that that's the platform we based it on um and again we were using the motorola v stack the 68000 series dsp uh 16-bit technology and this was all on isa back plane cards um with a big i remember it first coming in the room it was uh it was like a battleship. We unboxed this thing. <laughs> this thing came in the room and we were like, you know, we were used to plugging in guitars and doing that sort of stuff on the rock and roll side. And this big box came in. I was like, well, what's this? Open the box. <laughs> and it's this huge, you know, probably three or four foot deep IT server, you know, with all these cards populated. We whipped the lid off and was like, well, okay, there's loads of cards. And then it was another lid. This thing had two lids took the other lid off the front lid. And then you can see all of these computer components. You know, there's a motherboard, there was a floppy drive, there was a CD. It like the future. Yeah, it was, it was like a, gla- a first glance at the, the, the future and it was, mm. you know, revolutionary. And um, yeah, I, I just couldn't wrap my head around what it was. And to, to be able to sketch out your design on a PC with a drag and drop interface and then hit a compile button which then sends code to the hardware on this box was just absolutely, you know, bonkers, let's <laughs> say. Um, but once I got my head around it, it was like, this is an absolute game changer, you know? Um, so this was, you know, again, quite early days with regards to chip technology and uh, even with, with what Windows had to, to provide. Um, but we had great success with that longevity, you know, 10 years solid of those first legacy frames and systems that we put out there. You know, the first one was the U S Senate, then onto Disneyland in the U S and now of course we're, we're, you know, catering for theme parks and airports and football stadiums all over, all around the world. The second generation of media matrix, which was, which is neon, which is still going strong. Uh, was a different thing. It was a more streamlined approach. The technology allowed us to facilitate a smaller frame because uh, chip technology had got better. It got smaller. The footprint of devices was smaller. So, um, and then also we we went for a more robust approach with the operating system and use Linux, so we could use embedded operating systems that were more sort of you know quicker, more reliable. Uh, and more sort of um, fit for purpose, if you like, for the for the, the task in hand, and for the applications that we we were driving. Um, so we got this added added um, added reliability, and we could scale the cost down. You know, the costs overnight just you know come come down. Um, so we were more affordable and more um, fierce in the market for that and more competitive in the market. So the Neon system was um, a real lovely streamlined um, technology and, and system, an ecosystem. Mm. And of course, that brings me to the third generation, which is just launched, uh, what, three months ago at Infocom, um, 
which is the the neon predecessor scion and it's less of a jump because if you look at the 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 graph of technology it's kind of we had this huge hike into the sort of the nor- or late 90s yeah. and 90s and it's kind of tailed off a bit it's still going up but it's it's not as dramatic let's say and it's not as groundbreaking as those um as those days um but you know still saying that the scion processor can achieve five times more processing power than the neon which is already wow. amazing <laughs> yeah so you know i'm not downplaying it there there's a, there's great leaps and bounds but it's not as dramatic and it's not as profound let's say Sure. Um, of course, now we're doing our own layer three um, audio over IP uh, proprietary protocol with SNET. Um, and yeah, we're bringing more software features to, to the product, um, added reliability, more flexibility, more control, um, versatility as well. All those things that integrators like. Sorry? All those things that integrators like, flexibility, control. Yeah, all of those things, all of the above. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a, a lot of it's plug and play. We've got our own plug in system where you can bring a third party device in, like a UPS or a network switch, and it will talk to it um, over the network straight off the bat. Sure. Uh, so a, a lot Just, of um, compatibility. And James, this is probably a, a cruel and difficult question to answer for you, but. I mean, in 30 years at PV, are there, are there any things that stand out? Any personal highlights for you? Yeah, it's a good one, Paul. So many memories. Um, I think first and foremost, the people I've met and worked with, all my colleagues who have become friends and lifelong friends, both here in the UK and over in the States, in China as well. But also, you know, People I've met in the industry, um, clients, consultants, integration businesses all over the world. I've uh, been very lucky to, to have met so many great people. Um, another personal highlight, of course, of all, all the traveling, the, the places I've had the, the, the fortune to see, uh, and I'm very appreciative of that and grateful. So I've seen some amazing sights and uh some lovely places and spent some great time with, with, great, with great people. They're a bunch of the audio world, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, and it, I've, it's the variety of work, I would say, has always been the thing that I've kind of uh, appreciated and treasured. So no, not any two days are the same. Sure. I mean, does it feel like 30 years or has it gone quick? <sighs> You know, one one day I think it's gone quick, and then the next day I think it, this I've been doing this for forever. You know, <laughs> so it, it's a bit of both on that one, to be honest. <laughs> but it's been great, fantastic. Well, congratulations, James. It is like I said, it is no mean feat. I think it's um, to your credit that you've um, you've done so well. You, you know, you pushed. I, I know, I know the PV brand because of you. You pushed that name forward, um, and it, uh, you know, it's to your eternal credit. And yeah, congratulations on thirty years. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. And James, many thanks for joining us for this video. That's all for Innovate TV. Join us for the next video soon. Bye-bye. Bye.